Index funds have revolutionized investing, offering anyone access to the phenomenal returns of the stock market. I talk about the merits of index investing a lot, but I have something to admit. This is not how I invest, nor is it how I invest for my clients. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can take the methodologies of index investing one step further to target higher returns. Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is James, I'm a financial planner, and this is a place where you can learn to make smarter financial decisions. Index funds are an incredible tool where with relatively little effort, you can gain access to the average return of the market. And with this, you are guaranteed to beat 80% of professional fund managers out there. I talk about them a lot, which is why people seem surprised when they find out that this is not actually how I invest, nor is it how I invest for my clients. So in this video, I'm gonna be introducing you to a strategy called factor investing. If you're a fan of Ben Felix's channel, you will have no doubt have heard about this strategy before. It's a strategy that builds on all of the evidence and data that makes index investing so great to find smarter ways of building index funds to give you access to areas of the market that are known for producing higher returns. However, as you are about to see, this strategy adds a lot of complexity and requires a lot of behavioral strength to stick with. So we'll also be discussing whether this is the right strategy for you. Let's get into it. Investing is a science, just like biology or physics. And as all sciences develop, they help us explain things that were previously attributed to magic or God, which is exactly what it was like to be a stockbroker or fund manager in the 1950s and 60s. If you were able to achieve higher returns than the next man, then this was entirely attributed to your godlike skill at picking stocks and timing the market. That was until 1964, when William F. Sharp developed the Capital Asset Pricing Model, or CAPM for short which established that if an investor wanted to achieve a higher return than the market, then all they needed to do was to take on more risk than the market. In this, the inherent risk of the market was defined as beta and assigned the value of one. So a market cap weighted index fund would be expected to have a beta of one, whereas a portfolio of 50% stocks and 50% cash might have a beta of 0.5. Five, and a more concentrated portfolio of highly risky stocks or one that was using leverage might have a beta of 1.5. Beta is the measure of how sensitive a portfolio is to the risk of the market. So if the market went up by 10% in value, we would expect the low beta portfolio to rise by 5% and the high beta portfolio to rise by 15%. And this also works in the opposite direction. With this discovery, it became apparent that the main reason for one fund manager outperforming another was not actually due to their skill. It was simply because they were taking on more risk. And it was later discovered that 70% of a portfolio's return could be attributed to how much market risk it was exposed to. But when a fund manager was able to produce a higher return without taking on any additional risk, then this was like gold dust. And at the time, this outperformance or alpha, as it became known, could be attributed to the skill of that manager. And there were many fund managers like Warren Buffett and Peter Lynch that were able to produce exceptional returns without taking on any additional risks, or so it seemed. But again, just as scientific research led to the discovery of the market risk factor, researchers continued to investigate whether this alpha was genuinely due to the skill of individual managers or whether it could be explained by simply having exposure to some other factor. And they noticed that these higher performing portfolios tended to have higher allocations to companies with certain characteristics, namely smaller companies and value stocks, companies that have a low valuation compared with their fundamentals. And in 1981, Rolf Barnes produced a paper that showed that yes, it appeared that smaller companies had been producing higher returns than larger stocks without, it seemed, taking on any additional risk, whilst a 1985 paper showed that the same was true for value stocks outperforming more expensive growth stocks. But if subsections of the market are actually able to deliver higher returns without additional risk, 
This must mean that the market is not pricing them correctly and is evidence that markets are actually inefficient. But in 1992, Eugene Farmer and Kenneth French put forth a model that built on the cap M, suggesting that small cap and value stocks were actually exposed to a risk that was entirely independent of the market risk. Their three-factor model proposed that size and value were independent risk factors and independent drivers of return. And when they controlled for these two additional factors, their model was able to demonstrate that roughly two-thirds of the alpha generated by these fund managers could be explained by them simply having a higher exposure to smaller companies and value stocks. So with this model, we're now able to explain 90% of the difference in returns between two portfolios, which again was not good news for these fund managers whose godlike gifts were being explained away. And Pharma eventually went on to win a Nobel Prize for their research that uncovered these factors. So how can we use these findings to build smarter portfolios? Well, we now know that the more exposure we have to market risk, the higher return we should expect. And we also know that the more exposure we have to these other risk factors, again, the higher return we should expect. But when we say higher returns, just how big are we talking? Well, here we're looking at the UK market and how one pound would have grown over the last 70 years. Here you can see that investing in a market cap weighted index fund would have returned 1,169 pounds, which is a phenomenal return. But over that same period, value stocks returned 5,732 pounds, while small cap stocks returned 11,246. And we can see the same pattern in other geographies. In the US, since 1971, small cap value stocks have delivered a return that is four times larger than large cap growth. So, they are real and they are big. But if you're just using a normal market cap weighted index fund, then you are leaving a lot of these additional returns on the table. So if we want to get more exposure to these other risk factors and capture their higher returns, we're going to have to hold higher allocations of them in our portfolios. Since Pharma and French's three-factor model, other factors have now been discovered that help us to further explain the drivers of stock market returns, with the main ones being Momentum, where we find that stocks have performed well recently tend to continue to do so. And low volatility, where we find that less volatile stocks tend to produce higher risk-adjusted returns than more volatile stocks. And more recently, profitability, whereby more profitable companies have been shown to produce higher returns than less profitable ones. It's important to note that these factors do not outperform all of the time. They swing in and out of favor. But what's more interesting is actually how these factors interact with each other. Here we're looking at US stock market data between 1990 and 2011 that compares various single factor strategies with the S&P 500. You can see that over this period, each of these factor strategies outperformed the S&P 500 on an absolute basis and when adjusting for risk. But if we combine these four strategies together into a single portfolio, we can see that not only does it outperform the market, but we would have done so with less risk. This happens because these factors are not correlated with each other. So when one is outperforming, the other one is not, and then they cycle in and out of favor, which helps to smooth out returns. So why then isn't everyone factor investing? Well, up until recently, if you wanted to get a higher exposure to these factors, you had to pay a fund manager to do it for you. However, not only are they very expensive, but they often get things wrong. But over the last 15 years, asset managers like Vanguard, BlackRock, and Dimensional Fund Advisors have been creating smart beta funds that can systematically give you exposure to multiple factors within a single fund, all at very low cost. The only problem is that many of these funds are not available to retail investors in the UK, because in the UK, very few people are actually aware of factor investing, and therefore there isn't much demand for these types of products. Vanguard did actually have a range of factor-based ETFs, but they decided to close them down simply because there was low demand for them. So the first downside of this strategy is that it's actually hard to implement and will require you to have a multiple fund portfolio that adds in quite a lot of complexity. And the second problem is that this strategy will underperform at times. 
Here we're looking at US stock market data between 1927 and 2011 that looks at how often these factors have delivered positive premiums over different time periods. In the first column, we can see that the market has delivered a positive premium in 88% of five-year periods, which means that investing in a market cap-weighted index fund beat investing in US Treasury bills 88% of the time. And smaller companies beat large companies 71% of the time, value has also beaten growth 76% of the time, and momentum 94% of the time. This may sound good, but it shows that there is still a high probability of seeing five or even 10 year periods when these factors will underperform, as small cap and value have done over the last decade. So if you're going to embark on a strategy like this to target higher returns over the long term, you need to be prepared that you will underperform at times. And unless you have an extremely high conviction about this strategy and the way that you've implemented it, you will doubt yourself during those periods of underperformance. You'll start to question whether perhaps the markets have changed and these factors have just disappeared, or maybe they are there, but the funds that you're using are not working properly. Either way, there is a big risk that during one of these bouts of underperformance, you'll capitulate and buy into a normal index fund, at the same time locking in that underperformance. The debate about whether DIY investors should be factor investing or sticking with normal vanilla index funds is hotly debated, no more so than in the Bogglehead Investor Forum. And I think that my own thoughts are nicely summed up by these comments. My conviction is far too feeble for that. I couldn't personally stick it through a decade of underperformance. And if I did commit to Smart Beta Flavor X and didn't happen to pick one that started out well, not only would I have to be ignoring that underperformance, but I'd need to ignore the dozen other voices that said you didn't pick the right one. And then there is something very appealing, maybe even elegant about holding the market. You are guaranteed to beat the majority of investors. No other strategy offers this. Costs and taxes are minimized, and so is time and effort. And you don't regret your decisions. I talk a lot about how important it is to simplify your portfolio as much as possible, to prevent mistakes, reduce stress, and free up your time to do other things. And I feel that for the majority of investors, Factor investing is a dangerous distraction when index funds on their own will give you all the returns that you need to achieve your financial goals. But if you are prepared to do the extra work and you think that you've got the stomach to stick with it, factor investing may be for you. So you now have two options. If you think that you're part of this majority that should be sticking with normal index funds, you should watch this video here that explains why index funds are so hard to beat. But if you do want to go further down this factor investing rabbit hole and you're prepared to get a lot more technical, you should start by watching this video here, which is an interview between Ben Felix and the head of factor investing at Vanguard. I'll see you there.